this video, we'll be giving an overview of the two sprint tables in the Atlassian Data Lake, and we'll show an example query you can create with your sprint data. Let's start by clicking Create in the top navigation bar, and then select Chart. We'll then use a custom chart option to open the chart editor. Now that we're in the chart editor, let's make sure that an Atlassian data lake connection is selected as our data source for this query. Next, we can scroll to the JIRA software product section to see the two sprint tables. Note that the sprint tables will only appear if your Atlassian data lake connection includes JIRA software data. Let's take a look at the issue sprint history table first which tracks changes in issue allocation to sprints over time. We can expand the table to take a further look at the columns within the issue sprint history table. The action column indicates whether the issue has been added or removed from a sprint. The action at column is the date and time that the issue was added or removed from a sprint. The Author Account ID column has the Atlassian account ID of the user who added or removed the issue from a sprint. The Issue ID column is the unique identifier of the issue that was allocated to a sprint. The Sprint ID column is the unique identifier of the sprint that the issue was added or removed from. The Workspace ID column is an Atlassian identifier of the site or sites available in the workspace table. If your Atlassian data lake connection has data from multiple sites included, then you can use the workspace ID column to filter your charts by a specific site or sites. Next, let's take a look at the sprint table, which will list all of the sprints in your JIRA software projects. We can expand the table to look at the table's columns in more detail. The completed at column is the date and time that the sprint status changed to close, which signifies the sprint was completed. The created at column is the date and time that the sprint was created. The goal column is a brief explanation of what the team plans to achieve during the course of the sprint. The name column is the name of the sprint. The original board ID column is the unique identifier of the board where the sprint was originally planned or created. The projected to end at column is the date and time the sprint was projected to end. The projected to start at column is the date and time when the sprint was projected to start. The sort order column is the sequence order of sprints. The sprint ID column is the unique identifier of the sprint. The sprint reference column is the identifier of the sprint within a JIRA site. The status column identifies if the sprint is a future sprint, a currently active sprint, or a closed sprint. The workspace ID column is an Atlassian identifier of the site or sites available in the workspace table. Now that we've taken a look at the data within the sprint tables, let's create an example chart with this data. In the example, let's calculate the distribution of sprint lengths across closed sprints. For the query, we'll add the completed at, grouping it by day. We'll add the projected to end at column, again, grouping by day. And we will add the sprint ID column and leave it grouped. Next, we need to add a filter to our query so our data only looks at the closed sprints. To do this, let's select Add Filter, and we will then select the Status column from the Sprint table. We'll use the Equals Filter operator, and we'll type Closed. 
Next, we can run our query. First, we need to calculate the number of weeks in each sprint. To do this, we can add a formula column and select the date difference guided formula. We'll then select the day of projected to end at column, and then we'll select the day of completed at column. We'll choose week as our time unit, and then we can click save. I'll rename the date diff column to sprint weeks instead. Then we can hide both the day of completed at column and the day of projected to end at column. I'll then sort our sprint weeks column in ascending order. Now to get the count of sprints per week length, we can add a group and aggregate step where we'll group by sprint weeks and get a count of unique on the sprint ID column. And we can click save. Then I'll reorder the columns so that the sprint weeks column occurs first. Finally, we'll change the chart type to a bar chart. Then we can title this chart number of sprints by sprint length in weeks. To help you start getting insights from your sprint data, you can also use our dashboard template titled Jira Software Sprint Overview. Try it out and let us know what you think.